Aloha kako. My name is Mariah Kekai Malia Borsi and I am from Kluyo O in Kalihi Valley. Today I'll be sharing my capstone project, Kialo O Nahoku, which means the way of the stars. My project focuses on learning traditional navigation. Throughout this capstone journey, I spent a lot of time observing, listening, and being present to strengthen my understanding and connection to the place and elements around me. My grandpa, James Chizu, is the reason why I'm so passionate about the canoe. Last year, I took the same class, but did my project on my grandpa and his time with Hokulea. He was first introduced to Hokulea through Uncle Nainoa. After Hokulea's first voyage in 1976, she was left unattended to in the mangroves of Kaniohe, in which over time caused her host to wither. Uncle Nainoa knew that Hokulea should be sailing all over the Pacific instead of riding in the mangroves. To fulfill his visions, Uncle Nainoa needed people to come help restore her. Without any knowledge or background of building a canoe, Uncle Nainoa asked my grandpa to come volunteer and restore Hokulea. He was coming around occasionally to help, but soon he took on a job of working there full time around 1983. After two years, Hokulea was ready for her voyage. My grandpa sat on two legs, with the first being from Mililii to Tahiti and the second being from Ratatanga Cook Island to Waitangi, New Zealand. My passion for the canoe started because of my grandpa and grew as I learned and experienced more on the water. My grandpa loves talking about his time and memories with Hokulea and the crew. When I was picking classes for junior year, I knew I needed to take this one because I wanted to make memories and be impacted by the canoe like my grandpa did. During these past two years with Auntie Pua, I did just that. It's been a full circle. My grandpa sailed with Uncle Shorty, and here I am learning from him. Every time I tell that to my grandpa, he always says, Tell him I love him. His love for the canoe made my love for the canoe. If it wasn't for him and his story, I wouldn't have found mine. My story with the canoe starts with navigation. Ever since Auntie Pua first introduced the Pafu and Kukuo Koleni during junior year, I was very interested in navigation. This opportunity of learning a glimpse of the art and science of traditional wayfinding is a unique experience that allows me to deepen my connection with my culture and place around me. The most interesting thing to me in the art of wayfinding is using the same celestial bodies to guide us from one place to another, just like our ancestors. Each star holds a value and story that has helped the people of Polynesia on their journey of discovery, survival, culture reawakening, and global awareness. Most importantly, navigation has made me grounded. Observation of place and the elements have strengthened my connection to my culture and who I am. Everyone in the Migrations of Moana Nui Akea capsule class had an individual project that was preparation for our group capstone, which was a three-day voyage. To reach our goal of a three-day voyage, we trained the Makali'i throughout the year. My original individual capstone project was to study navigation and use that knowledge to further on the success of our mini-voyage. I had to study Kukuo Kolani, Constellations, and the Pafu. Papa Mao, who is from Sarawa, taught his knowledge of navigation to the people of Hawaii, including the Pafu. The Pafu is a Sarawani star compass. Unlike other compasses, the Pafu is orientated east to west. This is because Sarawa doesn't have enough fish to sustain the people, so they have to voyage east to a neighbor island to get food. They voyage because it is a way of survival. The compass has 32 points, but actually only 16 stars, because if you draw a line from north to south, they are just mirror reflections of each other. The only difference is that one side is rising and the other is setting. Papa calls the rising tan and the setting to pool. Here are the points on the Pafu, starting with tan early yearn. Tan early yearn, tan set a pool, tan tumor, tan masario, tan lube, mashimas, wili wili lube, mashimaleto, tupu lube, tupu masario, tupu tumor, tupu set a pool. To pull early yarn, to pull pie yarn, to pull my lap, to pull pie fung, to pull ul, to pull marigat, to pull mern, to pull iglig, to pull wiler, to pull male pali fung, willy willy fish muggy, tan male pali fung, tan wiler, tan iglig, tan mern, tan marigat. Tan ul, tan pai fung, tan my lap, tan pai yer, tan early yer. Here are the stars on the puffu, but in Hawaiian. Ke ku'u ku'u, me'e, lehua kona, kamaka. These five points are one constellation called neve. 
Kokomoko, Te Hukona, Ne'e, Ke Kuukuu. These three points are Humuma, Kapuahi, Makali'i, Ke Oya, Iva Keli'i, Nahiku, Holopuni, Kumau, Holopuni, Nahiku, Iva Keli'i, Ke Oya, Makali'i, Kapuahi, Humuma, Ke Kuku. Also, as I was studying the sky, I always had a hard time finding Kuma, the North Star. I made two tools to not only help me, but also my classmates. As you can see, I indicated other constellations called Northern Pointers to help me pinpoint Kuma. After I got the compasses and stars down, my next step was to apply all that I learned on the canoe. Pre-COVID-19, my class was committed to one week of training for a three-day voyage. During that week, we were supposed to have a night sail, in which Auntie Pua would have taught me things that just can't be taught in a classroom. Sadly, we weren't able to do that due to COVID. Although that was a real bummer, that didn't stop me from learning more about navigation. To further on my learnings during this time, I have been watching Sunset and the Stars every day. With the world being at a stop, I have a wonderful opportunity to go outside and connect myself to everything around me. This allows me to tune in to two important skills as a navigator, loneliness and observation. Navigators are the most lonely on a voyage. They have to be in tune to the environment and elements, such as the stars, moon, and swells to navigate and direct the canoe. They solely rely on their knowledge of navigation. Auntie Pua once told me that as a lonely navigator, you really have to be grounded spiritually. Through consistently watching the sunset and the stars and being in that place, I was able to get a glimpse of what I would have saw and felt on the canoe. To document the sunsets and the star watches, I decided to make a website that included blogs on my journal entry for every sunset. Each blog is different and unique to what I saw and felt that day or in that space. Some days I would write about what I saw, such as the color of the sunsets or the clouds, or it would be of how I felt that day, or sometimes I wouldn't write anything because I just didn't have anything to write. Every sunset opened my eyes to how emotionally, spiritually in tune you have to be with the place and elements around you. But being in that place made me realize how important it is to stop, observe, and just listen. Every day, my brothers and I drove up the mountain to watch the sunset. When we got to our spot, I sat in my car and just observed and listened, but most of all, reflected. With all these changes going on in my life, I was able to connect what I felt to what I was seeing. Here are a few journal reflections that I wrote over the past three weeks. April 8th, first day of sunset, Kiala Okala, Hoku Ovelo. The rest of senior year was canceled. This is news that I knew was coming, but I was hoping that I would hear the opposite. Ever since I was little, I dreamt about the day I would graduate and go to senior prom. I had hope for joy in the future, but it will never come. Today is the day we were also supposed to leave for a three-day voyage. It was so reachable and close, but in the end, it was taken away from us last minute. I'm supposed to be watching the sunset in the horizon on the canoe in the middle of the ocean, but instead I'm sitting on my car. As I watch the light disappear, it's as if senior year is disappearing too. But as I face the light, the dark is upon my back. Although this is a really hard time, we need to stop thinking about the negative. The stars are soon going to be visible, which reminds me that beautiful things are on its way. After the sun sets, the moon and stars come alive. And after they all set, the sun rises and gives us light. God is greater than anything we are going through. April 21st, first star watch. Kialo Nahoku, Lali o Iki Iki. Since it was overcast at night, I decided to go to sleep and wake up early in the morning to check out the sky. It's 5.30 a.m. The sky is clear. I see Manaya Kaleni, which is one of my favorite constellations. Right next to it is Mars, Jupiter, Saturn. Before I knew it, the stars started to diminish as the sun was ready to rise. This reminded me of one of my favorite morning star watches. Akane Honomoku and Kaneohe, Pusito, Papa Mao's son, had a star watch with us. Learning from Posito was a once-in-a-lifetime experience and something I will remember forever. In the beginning, it was a bit overcast, and then the clouds slowly started to shift, little by little, but we saw so many shooting stars. The only constellation I remember seeing was Manaya Kaleni, and we also saw Kumau. I really missed that trip, the people, and the canoe. When I first stepped into Kumupua's classroom as a junior, the first thing she asked me was, What is your passion? 
And that question left me dumbfounded because I really didn't know the answer. But little did I know that what she would be teaching and introducing me for the next two years would answer that question. My capstone project is more than a class, but more so a start of a new journey, and this is just the beginning. Mahalo to Nakalai Va'a for giving us the opportunity to be a part of your community and story. You guys have supported us and helped us through our journey. Mahalo to Uncle Shori and Uncle Chad for giving us their time in Mana'o. Mahalo to Le Ohu and Uncle Bebe for teaching and helping us on the canoe. I also want to thank Kumukaai and Auntie Reje for driving us down so we can be on the canoe. Most of all, I want to mahalo Kumupu for introducing me to the canoe. Your passion for the canoe has fueled my passion for the canoe. You have taught me so many things that I'll carry throughout my life, but most of all, you have taught me to stay true to who I am. And lastly, mahalo to my class for making this year a memorable one.